IP packet. Whereas we're talking about that first label that follows the label stack, which um, yes, it could have been an IP packet and we want to make sure we're not confused. So, so the, the, remember the, the, the issue arises because uh, without any so much as a bylaw or your leave, parsers go and look in here to see how to do ECMP. Right. So if I were to introduce an IPv10 and I wanted yeah. to do ECMP, um, chances are I'd probably go and look at the first nibble and so oh, it's a 10, I can ECMP as if it's a, you know, Kariti new IP. Uh, I right. thought I thought we had solved it with ELI uh, and, and uh, for historical reasons, the parsers were looking at four and six. And and we should not do it for ten version ten. Oh, well, I mean, I'm fine if we if we somehow rather deprecate looking beyond the end of stack for newer versions. Right. No, I, I agree yeah. with uh, Tarek. I think um, it was done for historic reasons, um, and so. For, uh, I mean, it's still necessary. So the IP version number registry is not the place we should be talking about this uh, nibble registry, because um, as Tarek said, maybe once we get beyond IP version six, um, by then we've flushed all the uh, all the code that uses uh, that looks at that. Well, you, you know, you can never flush okay. all that code. Well, otherwise, but at least that done. code is looking for four and six. And so we never let that code look for seven, eight, nine, ten. But this this idea that um, once I finish the label stack, I look at that nibble and say, is there a control word and what type of control word it is? That nibble needs to be in a registry somewhere. And whoever's grabbed the, uh, as you phrased it, a shitload of them, they need to get off that, and we need to say. Here, you know, zero, 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 zero is this, zero, 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 one is this. Four and six have special, you know, for the um, legacy code, they're not to be used. But everything between zero, 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 zero and zero, I mean, one, 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 one uh, needs to be in a registry. So we know exactly what that is. And if well, we, we definitely right, need to do something like that. We won't remember it, that's for sure. Exactly. And and not just remember it, but there's not a place that we can go uh, if someone uh, puts a new one. Uh, so, so anyone want to write that draft? Uh, I'll be happy to. I mean, the, the thing is... Um, well, I'd like to put some institutional memory into that writing. Yeah. yeah okay. So, Stuart, uh, do, do you have... Um, a point I think Matthew was in the background as well, weren't you, Matthew? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, do you have a, a pointer to the existing, uh, you know, whatever, wherever people have grabbed this? I mean, is it in an RFC? Is it in a draft? Is it uh, email? Well, they're all in different RFCs, aren't they? Well, at least five is. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm talking about people who have used. Other nibbles besides zero 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 and zero 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 one. Which... Well, so several people have used treble zero, and, and actually, technically, treble zero is undefined. Sorry, quad zero is undefined. Um, technically, okay. um, several people have used that. Um, there, I, I, I don't know quite what uh, Detnet used uh, quad zero, didn't it? So presumably, Greg. Detnet OAM is going to use triple zero one. Yes, actually, we we use the same nibbles as in sudo R. Okay. Yeah. So it's only beer. I don't know whether anything else has grabbed it, but the only thing we seem to know about is beer, isn't it? Yes. So why don't we do the following? Um, we write this draft. So um, yeah. I guess it's uh, Matthew Stewart and I, and then we. Oh, we I want to be there. Okay. Uh, and Noah. So sorry, well, I, uh, um, I'm going to give an action item. Um, I'm hoping I'm capturing the topic correctly. Do we need an MPLS payloads first nibble registry, right? Or are we, are we um, decided we want a registry? Not do we need, we need. <laughs> it's not a do we need. Um, and I think we're just... Um, okay. So uh, my proposal is that we we have this, and then we circulate it to the usual suspects, 
Yes. Uh, I think Matthew. Uh, uh, two T's. Two T's? Yeah. And did yeah. I have anyone? Did so I... Stuart would like to see it. You, you can add me. Greg. Okay. And somehow or other, we'll 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 figure it out. I, I we remember, we've got to we've got, we, we, we've got to also do the uh, make a reference to the uh, pseudo wire uh, control word is sort of mandated, sort of not mandated thing. Are we targeting IETF one twelve to have it ready? Yeah, hopefully, yes. Yeah, it's not a very long draft, is it? No. Uh, we're, we're creating an, a registry. We're putting in what we know, and then we're telling people, you know, get off the other, get off the other ones if you were thinking of it. Um, and note that there are only sixteen of them. Yes. And note that there are other uh, mechanisms. So, for example, if I look at an ACH, where's it gone? There's a version in there. So there's four bits of version field that could be used. Um, I don't think anyone uses the version for anything, do they? Or do they? Um, Not sure. Usually it's a zero. So, um, but yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It but might is anyone, it might there are some strange control words, aren't there? Isn't it? Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. In that net, for example, because we introduce a sequence number field in um, ACH. So oh, we, right. Yeah, that overruns it, doesn't it? We might be forced it. to change the version number. Yeah. Let's look at so, Tarek, add yeah. me to that donors group also. I want to be there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so, this is good. We need to do that. Uh, I have another question. Uh, yeah, DeckNet stops us using the version field. I, I sorry, I didn't catch it up. DeckNet stops us using the version field. Um, but but, uh, yeah, I mean, if DeckNet control words has its own nibble, then that particular nibble, um. You can't follow it with the conversion field. Others are free, free to do what they want. So, uh, Debt de Net has quad zero. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so I think in this um, um, draft, I mean, the initial registry would have quad zero goes to Debt Net. And uh, I don't know if anyone has triple zero one. Uh, we put that one. Triple zero one is, um, is, um, uh, OAM. Okay, so four zeros um, there, um, Tarek. Four, we've got four zeros, we've got four, three zeros, one, oh, we, they're already taken. Uh, zero, four zero. was taken. Who took two and three? Okay, maybe I, uh... Did anyone take? Um... Well, why did, why did um, B oh, yeah, go to five? Oh, sorry, who's um, got two and three? Five. I don't, I don't yeah. know. Who, who took two and three? I don't know that they did. Um, I don't, I don't think I, it's can, I, can I share some of my opinion? Um, no. I, I think, uh, yeah, conventionally, uh, we care about this uh, label value is because uh, uh, in the label stacks, there's no way to tell what follows. So uh, to avoid any confusion, uh, we need to, um, the, you know, reserve those four bits, uh, at least the, to note, um, uh, you know, confused with IP version, but um, now we have the actually you have the chance in the label stack to tell uh, what you are expecting uh, after the label stack. So in that sense, I don't think this for for base is important at all, because we know for sure what 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 actually follows. So the in that, sense, that you have like no, you don't. Problem. No, you yeah. don't. Only from the fact. Actually, it's it's not for sure. It's all based on assumptions. Yeah, it's, but but we have the now uh, at least uh, based on the all the existing proposals, we 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 have something indicate uh, in the in the label stack to tell you okay what follows. No, there so isn't anything in the label stack. No clue about that. If you... And and actually, 
Uh, at the we, moment, there is nothing in the label stack that tells you what follows. Yes, and that's that's reminded of um, the discussion we had that uh, making uh, control work in Ethernet pseudo-wire uh, optional uh, came back and did us in the rear because yes. of uh, MAC addresses. Yep. Yeah, so don't forget, if you're randomly looking at a packet, unless you previously parsed the uh, the bottom of stack label set um, to know what follows the bottom of stack, you have no way of knowing because it could be a it could be an old Ethernet packet without a um, a control word, or it could be something else that we don't know about because other people can put stuff at the end of an MPLS stack if they want, and they don't have to standardize it. So uh, what, what do you mean? You, you're saying you randomly look at the packet notes uh, parsing from the first byte, right? You, you, you... Some, some, sometimes people look at the first word of the, this is ECMP works by looking at the uh, top label, deciding where you're going to put the packet, and then going and hashing some values below the bottom of the stack without knowing what is at the bottom of the stack, just guessing. There's, we wrote an RFC. Usually you need to scan through the entire label stack to reach that. On the part no, well, no, they only just find the bottom. A lot of routers out there only find Right, the if you the want to find the bottom, you already scan through the label stack. But, right? So, but there's the, no... The, 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 they, they already do this. I mean, the code already does yeah. this. Yeah. Right or wrong, that's what a lot of the routers in the wild do. Look at the top label, find the bottom of stack, and um, look at a few uh, quasi-random bits in the bottom of stack, guess what the packet type is, and choose the ECMP selector from it. Well, at, uh, at least the ones I know, they look and see if the first label is four or six. Yes, yes, a bigger, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that, that's correct. And then based on that, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think maybe a few of them say, if it is not four or six, I will treat this as a control word, although that's typically done in the uh, in the uh, signal yeah. channel, but people do it in the data plane as well. So we want to formalize that, not so much because yes. that's what we'll use going forward, but... Um, two, two things. First, uh, even uh, in that case, you still need to scan the entire label stack to reach the bottom stack. The yes, second, but you don't understand any value other than the top of stack. Yeah, you, but you need so. So, so how you? I'm not sure what the issue is. I mean, in general, this only my my at uh, the end at yeah. the end of the label. Uh, sorry, at the end of the uh, LSP. So you've come to the end of the LSP. I mean, of course, people do look for ECMP. Uh, you know, all along uh, the path. So in an intermediate router, if I want to do better ECMP than just what the label says, then I can scan the whole label stack, go to the bottom of stack, hope for an IP uh, version number there, and then based on that, I can do ECMP. But uh, some people do that. Uh, with the label stacks getting deeper and deeper, I think people will find that increasingly hard to do. As Tarek pointed out, uh, what we really should be doing is to have an entropy label so you don't do all of this. But at the end of the stack, you definitely want to look at that and say, is there a sequence number? And if so, do I want to do something special with it? So you do need to recognize at the end of the LSP, uh, when you've popped off all the labels, you've come to the pseudo wire label, um, you want to know whether um, I have a control word and a sequence number and so on. Well, more... there aren't many sequence. There aren't many sequence numbers for um, pseudo wire. There's only a sequence yeah. number for that. So, so, folks, we have about four minutes left. Um, but and we have a plan on what what we need to do. So, I have a question on the the previous text we were discussion discussing. Okay, um, uh, let me before I save this. Uh, so, so don't forget that the, in our statement there is some words about not um uh, stopping historical systems from working so we must not make an assumption 
that means you have to purge all of systems prior to a certain date from the network. That's a valid point. I think it, yeah, there's, uh, there's uh, some language around that, yeah, already. Yes. Okay. Uh, are we comfortable with this? Did we, uh, I think- There's I an action item, yes, yeah. Good, I'll save that then. Oh, hang on, we'll go back, go back into those numbers again. Sorry. Can we go back to the nibbles again? Uh, no, was, quad, quad zero is taken by Detnet and Sudowa. And Sudowa, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think I saw it in Sudowa, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, what does Biro Stuart? AM use? Yes? Stuart? Yeah. Stuart? Yeah? It's fine. Uh, you may have taken zero, zero, and zero, one, but you didn't register them. Uh, we don't have. We don't have I, 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 yes, I'm trying to find out why we no, didn't. We, we had, just, there was a I big argument a, about this. Hey, Stuart, I just yeah. sent around the IP version numbers registry. Right, it's not in the IP version numbers registry. You're quite yeah, right. But it should not be there. Uh, uh, yeah. It to be. We need a new registry. Yes. So that's that's the, that's the problem. Okay, or two problems. First, uh, these. Uh, values are used not by IP. So uh, what might happen or need to happen, uh, the registry need, needs to be renamed because... No, 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 we need a new registry. The, I mean, you can't go renaming the IP version number registry. Or, no. or then, sure you yeah. Can. No, you cannot. Well, you could, but I don't, I don't think you should have much chance in the political fight. I mean, IP number registry is needed. You need yes. to know, uh, you can't go around using, repurposing that. We need a new no. registry. It's very simple. So, so the, the other so thing is that, if, the, if you the, do the, that, then you're going to have two registries which are talking about the same field in the packet. No, they're not the same field. This is the well, first yeah, nibble that's, after that's, nibble stack. That, that would be a problem. Yeah. Or, or might be when we create uh, the new registry, we update this explaining that these two registries refer to the same space in the packet. The yeah, same. And the, and the, and the IP cache. They do not. I'm sorry. They do not refer to the same. Well, I suppose if um, it was IPv7, it would come in on a different fact, just as IPv6 and IPv4 come in on different facts. Sure. The you IP registry is for a naked IP packet. Our uh, IP packet yeah. within MP, uh, within uh, yeah. Ethernet or something, yeah. and uh, that's a very different registry than this, which is the first nibble after a, after a label stack. Uh, well, but yeah, because... if the, if it's IP in the packet, it's actually the version number there. If there's a big if. We just don't want to confuse the IP version number with any other first label that we may so, have after a label uh, stack. You, you are sort of both right, and we need to be really careful how we write the text, and we really need to be really careful how we manage the politics. Yeah, I thought, uh, sure. Um, don't we? I, well, I mean, we're very, here we were very clearly talking about the first label that happens to come after the end of a label. Stack. Right. Now, now, there is one other thing, and that's that you can't be, if it's on the IP fec, because that, cause that's where pseudo buyers run over the IP fec. I don't think. No, maybe they don't. Anyway, it, anyway it, the point is that you you can't tell that, that, that uh, someone hasn't taken one of those other uh, isn't randomly using one of those values. So if it's a, a pseudo wire carrying Ethernet without the control word, you could find any value there. And so you can't take that nibble in isolation and deduce things from the about the packet. True, true. And potentially that that's an issue that we I mean it's an issue that we've skirted, yes. But it's an issue that's fundamental. Anyone thinking that they can just look at this field and deduce what the packet is had better make sure that, that no one's given them a raw Ethernet over MPLS packet. Or indeed, as I, as I keep saying, some other packet that's legitimately going across the network that's on a private protocol. Because you could run anything over MPLS if you wanted. Right. So th th this 
it is not really about packet identification, but sort of misidentification, you know, trying to avoid misidentification, which you could, for example, um, I don't know whether you can whether Ethernet quad zero or Ethernet zero 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 one was ever allocated. Um, I think it's in the uh, what they call OUI field, and yeah, um, you know it depends on who's taking right. what. I remember searching those a long time ago. Indeed. But, um, yeah, I don't people know. People made all sorts of assumptions, and those assumptions yeah. allowed us to run without the control word. And then some operators got very upset when um, uh, the uh, the registry uh, Ethernet registry started allocating fours and sixes. And also when people using um, you know randomized Ethernet addresses picked four and six. Right. So I think you have to expect um, that, there, that you you need some other indicator to know how to interpret that nibble. You can't just do it by randomly looking at the bottom of the stack and coming to a conclusion. The, the, again, we're catering that's, to that's what exactly what Peter offers do. So, so again, that's basically randomly looking at the below the bottom of the stack and trying to. Uh, deduce uh, type of the payload. That's a really bad thing to do. Well, the the People problem is this is what legacy code does. So we're exactly, exactly, to, exactly. To not make it worse. Um, I think yes. So I, I think your your um, warning words are important to put in the draft. At the same yeah. time, uh, I think it's also very important to say we're trying. I mean, we're trying to capture some of the actions that are already being taken. We're trying to to not make it worse, um, and we do need other signaling. So in principle, that extra signaling that you have for pseudo-wire uh, effects, and hopefully, I mean, you know, you understand when something is a debt net uh, connection. Mm -hmm. uh, so you you are signaling you, you, that. You, you only understand at the endpoints, Kariti, remember. A midpoint router, which is something that may want to look at ancillary data, can't right. deduce anything from the bottom of stack label. Ooh. Yeah. Because it's not it's not privy to what it's what it means. Well, for DeathNet, does every router not know? It doesn't. No, 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 no. So there's a sort of one of the sort of things well, that's it's, not... it's a little bit more complex because uh, the DeathNet can be modeled as multi segments with the wire. Yes. You have TPs and SPs. Yeah, but you still that's, have that's, yeah, 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 yeah. But the, the thing that's, that's the thing that's missing, there. thing that's missing, Greg, is whether you can have uh, an LSP that joins a pair of DetNet nodes, and uh, it's not quite clear to me just how well the service works when you've just got a random tunnel connecting a pair of DetNet nodes. No, uh, well, yeah, that's, that's a different thing. discussion. I just need to apologize. I, I'm jumping off. Uh, to their... Yeah, I think a bunch of us okay. need to go to Adrian's meeting, yeah. don't we? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, so... we will stop this at this, and we will write the draft, and then we will uh, wordsmith. Do, do, do you, Kariti, do you want to call anyone to try and call anyone together to discuss this before you put, um, you know, fingers to keyboard, or do you want to put fingers to keyboard and then we'll have a discussion? And it, it, it probably needs a discussion with a smaller group to start with to to to, to make some active progress. Yeah. So I I mean, ideally, I think um, I work a lot better if I put fingers to keyboard. What I would Good, do okay. is put put fingers to keyboard, but in um, uh, I don't know. Do we have a wiki for? Um, I mean, a GitHub thing for. MPLS? Not, not that I'm aware of. No, no, we do have a GitHub for the working group. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you're, you're, you're free. I, I can show you a pointer to it. You're free to upload a, a draft there, and people can contribute uh, and update it. How, would that work for you, um, Stuart, and others? Yeah, probably, probably. That would work, but yeah, send their link, and uh, we'll go from yeah, there. Yeah, I'll, I'll send the okay. GitHub. Uh, okay. Page. Okay, guys. See you in another meeting. Okay. See you in another place. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.